All right, I'll ask you this similar question. <laughs> Compared to the launch of DLSS 1.0, how good is FSR's launch? <laughs> um, it's a very different launch. <laughs> yeah, mostly I mean, from the fact that you know, as we talked about before, DLSS was advertised as a major selling point mm. of the GPUs. FSR is not, so that and that was, immediately sets expectations. DLSS 1.0 was absolutely atrocious and terrible for multiple reasons. First of all, the image quality that we saw in like Battlefield Five was terrible. That's not just us saying that. You know, gamers Nexus have the same opinion. M many other in the tech media. Uh, who had an honest look at it were like, yeah, this is hot garbage. So from an image quality perspective, it is very fair uh, to say, very fair and accurate to say that it was terrible. Uh, it was used as one of the key selling points of Turing, an architecture that offered Pascal users nothing in terms of cost per frame other than the promise of ray tracing and DLSS. So tensor core function. Uh, and it wasn't even available upon release. So how long did it take for deal the first DLSS after Turing's launch? Ooh, it was I, I think it was either November or December, and I think the cards were launched in September. I was going to say, it felt like a, so a um, couple of months. Yeah, a couple of months I was going to say. It was after say. Battlefield 5's release. Like, Battlefield 5 came out, mm -hmm. and I think it even took a couple of weeks for ray tracing and then a couple more weeks for DLSS. Yeah, that's, I think that's how memory. I remember it. So I think, I think another thing that you haven't mentioned is that when DLSS 1.0 came out, it wasn't just restricted to RTX GPUs. It was restricted to certain resolutions and quality settings. That's right, yeah. Because the overhead of DLSS was so large mm -hmm. that if you were running at, say, medium settings with no ray tracing, then you weren't getting a performance uplift because there... You know, you were basically you. It took so long. You turn down frame. the and the resolution, and then you have to do all this work to yep. bring it back up. You, you get a neutral effect. So, which was solved with DLSS 2.0. So, yeah, the launch of DLSS 1.0, especially when we discovered that it was worse than traditional upscaling. Yep. I was gonna say I that. felt that was pretty embarrassing for mm -hmm. Nvidia, mm -hmm. and I think that really hampered an option. And they did try and fix some of that with games like Metro Exodus, but it didn't really go the full way to what I think people were expecting it to be like from the promises. So, mm -hmm. you know, we haven't seen any of that with, with FSR, which, again, I think I was expecting maybe some of that to play out, some of those issues to play out. Um, you know, image quality may not have been up to scratch, which would have been, you know, not a great situation for AMD. We didn't see as much of that. Um, you know, we've got... Games supported at the launch. We've got more than one game. All those things are positive. But, you know, while it's all well and good to say, is this launch better than DLSS 1.0? DLSS 1.0 launched in 2018. It's a different time. <laughs> if you so, look at it in its little bubble of yeah. just the launch as you isolate all other things, it's like DLSS 1.0 was a disaster. Um, FSR is great success. However, <laughs> FSR... And DLSS 1.0 are so far disconnected now that it's a, yeah, irrelevant. It's like it's DLSS, DLSS 1.0, it, it came out three or four, yeah. three years so, ago now. And they've, they've already, NVIDIA's already had 18 months of their updated version that works really well out on the market. And so, as we talked about, they needed they needed FSR prior to now. Yeah, to DLSS 2 is that. excellent. Game support is I would say rapidly improving at this point. It's pretty good. It's uh, getting better. So, you know, NVIDIA's done a great job with that. We've been talking highly of the technology for quite some time now, and it is superior superior to FSR for those that can use DLSS in the games you can use, obviously. In some um, ways, yeah. In some ways. Yeah. In, in, well, most ways, I think it's probably yeah. fair to say. I'm going off your yeah. video. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, think I right. watched it correctly. Yeah. 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 Um, so... Yeah, that's the situation. But yeah, look, FSR has been successful so mm. far, but it's not, you know, yeah. uh, sit down and relax and AMD's done it. There's so much more work to be done, but this first step, what they've shown is promising, looks good. So let's see where we are in six months' time, 12 months' time. We'll, obviously, we'll yeah. keep evaluating it. There'll be many more FSR benchmarks and image comparisons and things from Tim. So we'll, we'll uh, do what we normally do, and that is continue to monitor and evaluate the situation as it develops. Yeah, and look, let's be honest. If AMD launched FSR and it was bad as DLSS 1.0, I'd like to think that they were smart enough to not make that mistake. Be a disaster. Because, because an absolute disaster. Yeah, you know, I think people internally would, if it was as bad as that, I think people internally would know. And it's like, well, we've already, the press already 
kind of eviscerated NVIDIA for mm-hmm. DLSS 1.0. So this could you would... imagine if AMD made all the same mistakes, oh. they would get destroyed even harder? It'd be, yeah, it'd be way worse than DLSS like 1.0. three point years out. later, they yeah. could only do that. It's like, oh my, yeah. it'd like, take... get wrecked. Yeah, it would take many years to recover <laughs> yeah. from that. So they were never yeah. going to make that mistake and they didn't. So Well, we hoped they wouldn't. 